Howdy, I'm Ryan F9, but I'm channeling Lemmy because this is my favorite cruiser gear. I put this outfit together for $1,000, and partly because that's the most I could afford, and partly because it's more fun to work with less money. A treasure hunt. That's what it is to find low-cost gear with top-level performance, the first of which is my Bell Scout Air. This is the lightest DOT and ECE helmet I know of, full stop. And there are other kind of things I can say to the Scout, and we'll get to them, but everything pales in comparison to the praises being sung by my scale. 720 grams for this size medium. If the Custom 500 was super light, well, this is stupid light. The secret behind Bell's impossible featherweight is Tri-Matrix, their in-house shell blend. It's a meritage of aramids, carbon fiber, and fiberglass. The tiny weight is more impressive for the Scout's larger reach. It actually swoops down to cover the ears, putting it beyond your average half helmet and somewhere short of a three-quarter. Those enslaved by the cruel mistress that is the Imperial system would risk naming this a 5 8 helmet. While the dropped shell has a pretty negligible effect on lateral impact safety, it does make the Scout noticeably quieter than helmets with soft ear flaps. And therein ends the luxury. No vents, no face shield. Bell does make an add-on clip-on lens, but alas, it's so new that I've never seen one. So the Scout Air is a very light bucket, if not much more than a bucket. Looking like the Great Gazoo is always a risk with half helmets, so I'm stoked to see Bell making five shell sizes. That way each head gets the slimmest possible outline. Speaking of which, order one size up. If Bell ever had an employee that understood size charts, they appear to have sacked him. Our next gold nugget on a budget is the Olympia Bradley jacket. Or should I say jackets? Because the Bradley can wear its own waterproof liner. The shell is more than capable of taking point, with two tones, reflective piping, elastics, Velcros, and a cell phone saving waterproof pocket. Like Harrison Ford, it can even be solo. While riding, you'll want to stick with the big guy, however. He's got 600D Cordura sliding zones, shoulders, elbows, back, bum, and then everywhere else, it's ballistic mesh. Ballistic just means slightly stronger polyester, by the way. And I wouldn't go taking a bullet for anyone unless you really like them. Best thing Bradley has going for him is armor. There's a full suite of CE level two viscoelastics and they're unbelievably pliable. Watch out D3O. These CE level twos are comfier than your CE level ones. And the brand is called Smoothways. They buy their chemicals from Germany, but pour the molds in Pakistan, so exactly like schnitzel cooked in a tandoori oven, it's fantastic. I've always had a soft spot for mesh jackets with over-under rain shells because they're so damn versatile. Warm and dry, mesh jacket with shell stuffed in pocket. Warm and wet, mesh jacket with shell underneath, so water will seep through and evaporate off the liner to keep you cool. Then cold and dry demands rain shell over mesh, ditto cold and wet. If I have to buy one system for all weather, this is it. Unusual body shapes are Olympia's bread and butter, so expect the Bradley to have wider expansion gussets, longer cinch straps, and more Velcro than anything you've worn. This size large fits my 6'3", 190 pound frame just fine, but I could gain 100 pounds and still fit fine. Even if things did get out of shape, they'd stay under wraps thanks to the pant attachment zipper and belt loop. The pants I'm wearing are Climb Outriders. Kinda unimaginative on my part. I bought these for the commuter video and loved them so much that I returned my cruiser pants and reused these. Screw variety, right? I mean, if these are the best option, let's see them twice. They feel exactly like a pair of car hearts. No liner, no stuffy Kevlar, no scratchy aramids. The Outrider doesn't need that stuff because it's built entirely from nylon Cordura. I reckon that's tough enough for most slides. And Climb will replace them for free if you wreck within the first five years. It's not like they have to live through multiple crashes. These are the first moto pants that I would actually wear as regular pants. They're that comfortable, they're that good looking, the knee and hip D3O is that easy to remove thanks to the enormous pockets. For an elite brand like Climb, $230 is priced to sell. And I don't mean that in the bullshit marketing way, I think they actually underpriced this, hoping to earn back their production costs by selling thousands. Will that succeed? I don't know, who cares, it's not my problem. I'm just psyched that I bought one. Boots, gloves, bandana, a couple small treasures before our hunt is over. 
The shoe is Black Brand Stomper, just a clean black riding boot. Something which has become oddly difficult to find of late. 180 bucks, normal. Toe, heel, ankle armor, normal. Beefy walking sole, normal. 100% leather construction, abnormal at this price point. The leather stiffness is also definitely abnormal. I like the safety on this boot. I also pity the fool that tried to eat this cow. The Hypora waterproof membrane is another unexpected luxury. Yes, this is poor man's Gore-Tex. Yes, it's mildly less waterproof and majorly less breathable. But hey, I mean, if you treat the leather right with some mink oil, then the Hypora is just a fail safe anyway. You should stay dry. The Stomper is simple, archetypical. The exemplary motorcycle boot. If you can stomach some nauseating branding. Our gear is not what you buy when you want what everyone else has. You need to be a wolf, not the sheep, to ride in black brand. So apparently they'd be really psyched if only a few of us bought this boot. Right. Oh good, it comes with a skull sticker too. And that was very cool in 1997. Thankfully they only stamped their death logo at the top of the tongue, where it does look perfect right underneath my pant cuff. If your pants come down far enough to cover the little D3O tag as well, lucky you. I'm all for viscoelastic armor, but the Stomper doesn't have any. Only the insole is D3O, and that's a gimmick. And it's no safer and no more walkable than your standard foamy. All D3O achieved here was to add an orange blemish to an otherwise slick boot. My gloves are Z1R bolts, and at 40 bucks, it's hard to find a fault. Sure, they're not 100% leather, but damn near 80% of the surface area is. And it's proper full grain stuff, so that leather should develop a classic biker patina. And sure, the palms are pretty thin, but they're made from one seamless piece of cow. I would rather risk wearing through the leather outright than losing skin instantaneously through a busted seam. The bolt fits slim in the fingers, but still true to size. Unarmored and unencumbered, this glove is thin, breezy, and super light at 40 grams a piece. No joke, when my Zebronar bolts arrived, I thought they sent an empty bag by mistake. Since I have 20 bucks left over in my thousand dollar budget, shampoo tube. If you've never ridden in a neck tube, you have no idea what you're missing. Fighter pilots use silk scarves to prevent chafing, and motorcyclists use these to smoothen our head checks. It also filters out bugs, which I need after choosing a half helmet. The material is alternating low density and hydrophobic microfiber. The low density sponges sweat in, and then the hydrophobic pushes it up to the surface to be evaporated. For that reason, the shampoo tube makes a good under helmet sweat rag. And I claim you can use it 10 other ways too. One way I wouldn't use it is what they illustrate on the packaging. Masking up behind two pretty women? Very creepy. Treasure hunt over. It was a fair amount of legwork, but we found a wealth of functionality within our budget. Thanks for watching.